I'm not going nowhere, baby girl. I'm not gonna go anywhere. Hey everyone, welcome to the office. I have been dreading doing this for quite some time, but it definitely needs to get done. So what I'm gonna do is just set y'all down right here. Let's see if we're gonna get a good shot. Oh yeah, I should definitely be inside the shot right there. Got y'all on wide angle lens. So what we have going on is the channel has received quite a few things and it's time to clean up because there's really not much space on my desk, um, on any of the desks that we have in here. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's uh, open up first and foremost some packages. I really don't do this much. Um, come in here and just film behind the scenes type stuff. So why not do it today? Let's uh, get package number one from Sims Fishing. Uh, I've been wanting this item for the longest time. And if you've ever went to their website, you'll notice that there's really not much there uh, that's in stock. A lot of the items you have to submit an email to them letting them know that, hey, we want to be notified whenever items come in. And so, right here. Let's get closer to the camera. This is what I've been wanting for the longest time because this is easy to use whenever it comes time to tying leaders but this right here is gonna allow me to get really up close to that knot without damaging or sacrificing the integrity of it because these right here can sometimes nip the, the knot itself instead of the tag end. And this right here is their pro nipper. And so what it allows me to do, I wish I had some leader line. We got some heavy stuff right here behind me and uh, we'll use the older stuff hopefully y'all will be able to see this but whenever you take in you tie a knot big hypothetical and you want to come let me put the glasses on so i can see when you want to cut right there towards the very edge of that knot so that um, your knot diameter is super small. The scissors are kind of hard to do that with. I can get it done, but it's not as precise as this thing right here is gonna be. So we essentially put this right up against the knot and then slowly clamp down on it. And there you go. I am super happy to have this and then with I mean, there's so many things. We'll just list this in the video description down below. I don't wanna actually make this video about uh, like any one particular product. What I gotta do is, let's take the camera really quick. I've gotta clear up the entire, look at that. There's no desk space anywhere in here. We've got so many items. Strike King, thank you for hooking the channel up. We've got quite a few crankbaits inside here. I love these, the, the Slabalicious from Mr. Crappie or by Strike King. Uh, these right here are the ones that y'all will see me use. If you go back into season three, maybe even season four, you'll see a lot of those in use. And so I ordered some other colors to put on these little flats bugs, which I have over here as well. Lots of bugs but the flats bug has some curl tails. And once those get wasted, uh, essentially I'll turn this into a, like a swim jig. And for those of you that fish the uh, bass world, you know what a swim jig is. Well, we'll take a paddle tail like that. This one right here, I'm gonna try out with the blue crab. And then, I mean, we've got so many things here. I'm just gonna dump this on the floor. All right, so there we are. 
um, slab hammers. These are for mainly like for the crappie, which is uh, why it's called Mr. Crappie. But we got quite a few of these. We've also got, I'm sorry if I get the camera out of focus. I'll stare at the lens instead of the actual products that I'm holding. Just in case we start doing some bass fishing, we've got some tungsten weights. I think I got the quarter ounce. Yeah, those are quarter. So I got a whole box of those. Um, we've also got more of those. But I think this is just mainly the Slabalicious right here. Paddle tails, look at that color. That's pretty awesome. The Hoodat. They only allowed me to get one of these because they were a very limited supply. Apparently that must be like a really hot item for them to limit how many you're gonna get of each color. But these are the June bug ones. This right here is the pumpkin seed chartreuse. More of those. Four packs. Look at this. I want to try this out for flounder and reds alike. Maybe even work for speckled trout. That's a tiny crappie spinner bait. It's a one eighth ounce and I can use these trailers or we can go to the Slabalicious once they, I mean, we get two spares right there. So pretty nice. Here we are with some more. So we got four of those. And then, yeah, the rest of them are the uh, slab hammers. Uh, I'm going to put another order in for these fellas right here. These are who I was trying to find, but during my first order, I couldn't find these little bitsy minnows. And I've used these a lot on the channel. So we're going to stock up on various colors for those guys right there. What I should have did was... I don't think I I have any more of these. Yeah, I'm fresh out. So we'll have to go to the hardware store and purchase some more. Uh, we'll make some room. We've got a couple of the uh, KVD two and a half wake baits right here. I have one tied on right here. I haven't really thrown it much. And this is a cranking rod from Old 18 Outfitters, the ballistic. It's a medium and uh, it's like a combination of graphite and glass i want to say is what the uh, master builder told me jake over at old 18. Um, i've used them a couple of times you can see what we got mirrodine right there and then the wake bait from strike king so that's gonna be uh one of the ones that i will use with the bigger variety that we got over here um yeah, I guess some bass fishing is in order, possibly in the near future, until uh, we start doing that. The bulk of these will not get used, but I did purchase them with the intent to use at the jetties because I've caught some of the biggest speckled trout off of these guys against the rocks. And when they wouldn't bite anything else, they were biting small little fat crankbaits that go about four foot below the surface and so that's what I bought those guys for. We've also got these for bass jigs, one ounce tungsten and then one and a half ounce tungsten. So yeah. So we got that right there. Uh, what else did we get from Sims? I'm gonna try out their cooling boxer here in Texas. It's hot, it's very humid. We're gonna see if these actually work. <laughs> Let y'all see my chones. But yeah, we got that, that, um, and then the rest of it is just tools that and, and lures that we have used, but they need to get put up. Um, we got quite a bit of stuff. So not too sure how exciting this video is going to be for some of y'all, but for the core audience, you know, hopefully you get a uh, kick out of me trying to organize this stuff and uh, put some of the things away. Um, most likely they're just going to go back into the boxes. Uh, I, I, let's not make it about putting this stuff away. That's a show and tell that y'all got, got to see. Um, let's just talk about the office. I think I can do a better video about that. 
uh, we'll start with the rods and reels. This is a homemade rack that I built to hold eight of them. And so that's all bait casters on this side. The arsenal includes three uh, Super Duty Lou's. Those are 300 series Super Duties. And we have two Traverse rods right over here. That's a Magnum Heavy. That's the Medium Heavy. Actually, yeah, Medium Heavy, Magnum Heavy. There's one in between the size, but I didn't get that one. That's the Extra Heavy. Uh, we have a Medium Heavy Suppressor right there. Then we step down to the Cranking Rods, which uh, we've got a Lose Pro TI on that one, and that's uh, also a medium. This is a medium. We just talked about that one. The reel that we have is the Lose, uh, what is it called? Man, um, I'm drawing a blank. Okay, so what is this one called again? The Hyper Mag. I knew it was magnesium. But uh, there's been a lot of chatter out there saying that you're not supposed to use magnesium frames in salt water. Man, this thing has been used for two years and it's still clicking um, or it's still ticking. We've got over here, y'all are very familiar with these uh, buoyancy rods and the Luz Custom Lights. I absolutely love these. I was a Shimano Baitcaster dude for the longest time, but when you come over here, you can see a lot of the Shimano's that do not get used anymore. We started off with the original Corrado 200, that's the Bantam, and then that's a Luz right there, custom light. Uh, we've got the Calcutta Conquest right there, another Conquest, the just regular old school Calcutta 250, that's a 200B, and then, yeah, those are a lot of the stuff but these right here i absolutely love them nothing fancy about it it's just a very lightweight reel that's also the custom light that's on the old 18 ascent rod right there and uh, that's the extent of our bait casters we come over here to this side these are all for the most part spinning reels christian my son is trying to like jump start his channel again so that's his uh, set up right there. He's not using any of my sponsored gear. So he's got a Daiwa that he purchased with his own money. And then that's the Luz SLX. I think that's the DC. I haven't heard the hum from it whenever he's been casting, but uh, yeah, that's a SLX DC. That's a great reel. I prefer that over the Corrado. But over here, we have the Travala S jigging rod. And then the Shimano Stella 4000, that's my, one of the big setups that when we go offshore or to the jetties or anything where I'm just going to drop straight down with live bait or jigging lures, that's what we use. And then right over here, two 500 series spinning reels. We've got the uh, Old 18 Outfitters Buoyancy Ultralights. This one is a light power buoyancy and uh, I'm going to get a 1000 series spinning reel. I'm not too sure which one we're still on the market for that. And then this is the suppressor. That's a medium light. I was waiting for a medium light buoyancy, but uh, we took this one instead because that's what old 18 had at the time. And then this fella is going to get replaced as well. We have a 3000 series spinning reel. I usually use these with popping corks or when we go to the jetty, it's the uh, slip cork rig setup. So that's this one right here. That's a medium and yeah, so that's the spinning side. Again, it's uh, a, a DIY rod rack. Just took some red oak from the hardware store and used a hole saw and just drilled out all of that right there jigsaw to cut these and uh, we've got eight rods on each side uh, over here is the bench as you all saw uh, we've got some spinning reels over here that are no longer in use and then a couple of cameras a few things this is the glory board right there some of the items that get used almost on a daily when we go out there now actually you know what that's a lie because 
These have not been used. I haven't been bass fishing in a while, but that gets used a lot. That, the shrimp lures, those. These jig heads are what I'm using now. I used to use these a lot. I, however, I haven't used them in quite some time. And then bass stuff over here, the bread and butter, y'all. Clickbait shrimp, killed it last video. This exact one right here, the gotcha pattern. And then we got the hot head bug in various colors back there. The flats bug, absolutely love this one. There's uh, one of my choice colors, the blue crab. Also love the black and gold in that. The curl tail redfish jig. Waiting for this thing to spring to life. Usually uh, late summer, fall time frame, this is gonna be a money maker. Trout thumper for wintertime fishing. And then the clickbait minnow, you can probably get away with using one of the smaller varieties uh, because of all the glass minnows that are out there. I would recommend something like a natural color, maybe even the white. But, uh, all of that stuff gets used. We've got the fishing line that uh, we normally use, and it's mainly going to be five pound for the ultralight spinning reels, 10 pound braid on everything else, with exception to the a couple of the super duties have some 20 and 30 pound braid and then the shimano stella over here definitely has 30 pound braid right there um the banfords i think they got 10 pound braid like 300 yards of 10 pound braid all the camera gear gets all rested over here uh, you got the action hat up close and personal what i film with and everything I mean, this guy has seen better days. Look at that. Very crusty, super salty. Um, that is a Rode Lav Mic Hero 9. And then that's the Action Hat DIY kit. Here, uh, I already said the Hero 9. Uh, let's see. There's the inside of it, what it looks like and how it mounts. And this little fella is responsible for cutting down that wind noise and... Uh, in order to juice that fella up, this is the uh, the media mod that clips onto that and it allows us to plug the mic in, which is down there. But in order to juice that fella, we got our battery box over here and quite a bit of batteries. This is to replace the pliers that we just lost, so I got to put another order into Amazon to restock on those. But all of our batteries are right here. We've got six Hero 9 batteries and then three Sony batteries for the big camera. When we do B-roll, this is what we reach out there and touch them with. We also have the DJI Mavic Air drone. So if it's not too windy and I have some time, we'll launch this fella up in the air. Uh, normally I don't try to do it inside the kayak because my finger, I mean, it took a shellacking right here. The middle finger, that thing got me really good. Ripped the skin off and everything. Uh, that was me trying to catch this in midair. And so I refuse to do that again. But uh, yeah, Sony G Master lens, the a7 III camera, does a phenomenal job at steadying the shots, shooting super slow motion. And uh, we can reach out there and touch the wildlife. Over here, we have the Rode video, what is it, the wireless go-to mics. So we got two mics. That's what me and the wife will use whenever we're doing our filming for the cook video. So both y'all can hear both of us talk. And then when I'm out there fishing, I'm actually using one of these right now. It's the same thing that we have on our hat cam setup. It's the uh, lav mic from Rode, they do phenomenal jobs. This is the power bank that I use to power our second camera angle from behind the seat on the kayak. That's a nice camera boom. And I put some duct tape on it to fit inside the rod holder of my crate. And so the power bank right there goes inside the bag. And then we got that wire right there that runs up the length to the Hero 9 and to make that happen, to capture the footage because it's behind me. When the, when the remote works, I, I'm not gonna blame the remote. It's the camera. That thing has had issues since day one. It's my very first Hero 9 
and I've had nothing but issues with it. And so I turned it into a secondary camera because it's not reliable. But when the remote is working with that and its connection, I don't have to turn around, uh, get on top of the seat and then reach for this and capture footage. I can just do that with the remote. So that's what that is right there. And I think that's pretty much it. We got our dry bag. That's what you'll always see inside the crate itself. Uh, inside that dry bag, we've got 15 pound fluorocarbon. I also have, I think it's a 20 pound. Let's open that up so y'all can see that inside there. Eyeglasses, uh, 20 pound fluor, I mean, uh, monofilament from, I think that was uh, Suffix. And then over here is a battery charging station for the autopilot. This runs the fish finder, the Helix 7 that we have on it. And then this right here is the battery power. Uh, this is the tray that comes with Old Town's kayak. I have it outfitted for two 50 amp hour batteries. These are in, uh, yeah, don't quote me on it. I want to say it's parallel because it's, uh, it'll still be 12 volts. I'm not an electrician. I just uh, follow diagrams and it was pretty easy to make that happen. But uh, you got some adapters right there and that comes out to this cord right there which plugs into the autopilot. But right here is our charging station for everything. We've got so many cords and power strips underneath this desk. Old calendars uh, to look back on and what I do is essentially look for these pink highlighted marks because those were exceptional days and we check out the temperatures and stuff like that. On the actual tackle wall, uh, there's things that I come over here, this is like a surplus and then just items that I just don't use anymore or we'll pull them ever so often. And then we've got uh, used tackle comes right here until I can Put it back inside one of the three tackle trays that i take out there on the water we have our vhf radio whenever we do some like offshore type stuff in the kayak or if i'm going to go out there on the jetty and that's four miles out uh, you don't realize that galveston north jetty goes out there that far but it does and so um, we just want to make sure that if the cell phone doesn't work that will definitely be able to make contact with the coast guard fishing line. Uh, we also have the uh, fly fishing line right there. Lots of different pounds, leader line, a uh, couple of more spools. I mean, you can see it all. Uh, this is essentially my office. This is the workspace. Uh, lots of tackle trays that truly do not get used anymore. That's for the all like the bass fishing world right there. Maybe one or two saltwater boxes. And then the drying rack whenever we rinse off with fresh water. All of these lures just come here to start drying and uh, we'll come and select one of these uh, maybe once every five years because <laughs> in all honesty, I haven't really pulled anything. These fellas are up here a step above all of that because they're top shelf. Uh, those actually get used. We have extra gear over here. These are some of the road mics that we originally started out with for the big camera, but I no longer film like that. Um, I don't like the uh, inability of having um, video stabilization. So like right now I'm filming with the um, iPhone because it has stabilization. Here's another one of the lenses that I used to use. I mean, I would use this if I'm gonna go vlog, like let's just say iCast, a fishing show, something like that. This is my primary lens right there. And then at which point in time, we'll still continue not using that road mic, but the uh, wireless go-to because it just does a phenomenal job. Um, that one actually sounds like an echo and it makes a lot of noise. But uh, over here, surplus of Catchco gear. As y'all know, they are a sponsor of the channel and I really couldn't do what I do without their help. So. We've got that, and then last but not least, you got just the gear. Uh, Sims gear, that's a rain jacket. Christian's waders right there. My waders right here. Uh, when I was stationed up north, I have a Coca-Tat tri-suit. Uh, it doesn't really get cold enough here 
in Texas to actually use that. Spare hats, my old Hobie hatch right there that got uh, warrantied, and then my jackets and then other hats. <laughs> but that is the tour of the office. It's an updated one. You know what? I failed to mention our editing station right here. That's a MacBook Pro. We have an LG monitor to throw everything up on the workstation. And then we got some nice Bose speakers because I wanna be able to hear during uh, playback what it is that y'all are hearing, especially for you that use headphones. Um, I want y'all to have a good experience with the audio. So we're gonna fire this puppy up and let's see. And this is essentially what I'm working with over here. So minimize, exit that out. We'll fire up. This is Final Cut Pro, the program that we're using. And uh, I'll just give you all a quick tour. Let's see, what do we have here? This was the uh, video that y'all had saw previously to what I got right there. Um, I have been editing the past maybe five to seven videos now and essentially all of our clips go right here when we import them and then you got to drag them down here to the timeline and we do a lot of cutting and stuff like that so we'll play that and then that's essentially what you're looking at and so our timeline is way over here that red bar and as it moves throughout the project these are all the cuts and everything that I have made, transitions, and then the green down there, that's music. This is where I've separated audio from the actual clip because I wanted it to tie in well without hearing any sound spikes. This over here, this right here that we just tied on everyone, that right is there is a clickbait shrimp. All it's right, so shrimp imitation. And let's turn that down. Okay, so there we go. Uh, for those of you that are YouTubers and you're wanting to try to figure out sound spikes, Final Cut Pro allows you to do that. So you, zero is like still high. So if your left and right channels um, go over zero, it will start to turn red. And then you can see the audio files right here. Anything that goes over and turns red, that's yellow. So you're still good. What I try to do is aim for negative four decibels, uh, negative six to negative four. That'll be a comfortable listening uh, tone. When it starts to go over, that's whenever your ears are gonna start to hurt and you're gonna hear crackling and stuff like that. So I always pay attention to that. And then the other thing is keeping the, the lens clean to the camera. It's very tough to do whenever you're out there but we have these right here. You buy them in bulk. It costs quite a bit of money to do this, but it's a necessary evil to spend all this extra money to make sure that you clean these lenses. And then once that lens is clean, this is the only one that I care about because that's what's actually filming. That is just an LED, so you can see yourself. I rarely ever use that, but when we're on the water and I do a battery swap, it always gets cleaned um, with this camera cloth or the lens cloth. And then I have, this is a spare vest right here from Old Town, the lure angler, that's what I use. But I have another lens cloth inside this, uh, what do you call it, pocket. My phone goes in here, pliers, they go right there. Um, attached to this little ring right there is the little red thing that y'all see, and that is that red thing is this right over here. You see that whistle behind there? That is what I have, and that's what you see that goes right here in between the uh, behind that zipper, tucked away. Pretty nice PFD right there, and. That right there, how long has this video been going? Oh my gosh, that's a long time. I seriously doubt that anybody will make it to the end of this video, but if you did make it to the end, 
I want you to do me a favor. Drop a comment down in the description, not in the description, in the comment section, and uh, just tell me something about the office. And what I'm gonna do is give away one of these mystery tackle boxes. We have quite a bit of stuff, but uh, this right here is a token of my appreciation because if you've made it this far, I consider you one of my core subscribers, uh, or you may not even be subscribed. Um, you can probably just be a viewer of the channel who has yet to subscribe uh, for whatever reason. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just happy that you watched the video and we're gonna ship this out to one of you. Um, so we'll let the video play for maybe two days and then I will announce the winner. I'll make a comment to you that you won. And one of the things that I wanna make sure that y'all understand, um, I'm never gonna tell you to here, let's pause this right here. And we're gonna go to YouTube. Uh, let's see. So here we are. Um, when you see my channel or whenever I make a comment to one of y'all, let's go to one of the comments. Okay, so here we go. When, when I make a comment, it's gonna have the logo right there and it's going to say mdlr fishing not somebody's phone number and telling you to text me uh, i would never i mean m my comment will only have mdlr fishing and my logo okay so that's how you know it's a legit actual comment from me telling you that you've won something so again, thank you for making it this far into the video. We're gonna do the mystery tackle box uh, to one of y'all. I don't use them and uh, I don't push those um, for my own reasons, but uh, it's just, I mean, Catchco uh, supports us. And as a token of my appreciation to each and every one of you for watching, let's just give that away um, and thank Catchco and Mystery Tackle Box for uh, the support that they give me and uh, me thanking you for the support that you give me. So I'm rambling now. Um, let's just end this one. Thanks for watching and until next time, tight lines, y'all.